The next section is only for level 2 students. This is paragraph 43 of the H schedule. This section tells us what do we do when we've acquired and then disposed of an asset which has been acquired or disposed of in a foreign currency. So I want you to understand what this is trying to talk about. They say, so you've got an asset. Let's call it a manufacturing machine, machine X. And now you sell it. What, what, how do we calculate the price gains and losses or the capital gain rather? How do we calculate the capital gain if that machine was maybe um, purchased in a foreign currency? So you bought it in dollars or sold in a foreign currency? How are we going to handle that? That's what this section tries to answer. Now I'm going to just spice it up a little bit and tell you also, it might be that it was purchased in one currency, let's say euros, and sold in another currency, let's say dollars. So how do we handle that? Okay, so paragraph 43 of the H schedule tells us what to do. So it says, where, during any year of assessment, a person that is a natural person or a trust, that is not, or a trust that is not carrying on a trade. So a natural person, yes, or a trust that is not carrying on a trade, disposes of an asset for proceeds in a foreign currency after having incurred expenditure in respect of that asset in the same currency. So I want you to see, this applies to natural persons or to non-trading trusts who are sold an asset and the proceeds is in the one currency and the expenditure is in the same currency. So you bought and sold it in dollars, for example. Then they say, you must determine the capital gain in that currency. And then you must translate the capital gain or the capital loss by applying the average exchange rate for the year of assessment. Or by applying the um, spot rate on the date of disposal of that asset. So you can use either average or the spot rate. So what are they trying to say here? They're trying to say, you will say proceeds, let's assume it was in dollars, proceeds is $1,000, base cost is $800, so that gives us a capital gain of $200. That $200, you use either spot or average. Now I want you to understand what we're going to see next. What we're going to see next, in the next section, is where the proceeds and the base cost are not necessarily the same. Or this natural per it's not a natural person, it's a company. So what it will be then is you will have to translate the proceeds into rands and the base cost into rands as well. And there will be different rules there. So what's the difference between paragraph 43.1 and the next one? 43.1 says calculate this capital gain over here in a foreign currency. The next section you'll see will tell us to calculate it in rands as usual. It will just tell us how to do that. So that's important for you to see that. Again, you will use whichever one is the better one for you. So here's 43.1a. So watch now the difference here. It says, where a person disposes of an asset other than a disposal in paragraph 1. So I'm just referring to, so this is paragraph 1. So they're trying to say, this cannot be um, a natural person, sure. Or it can also be a company will be here. They say for proceeds in a foreign currency or having incurred expenditure in respect of the asset in a foreign currency. I want you to see that they don't tell you it must be the same currencies. So this might be that proceeds is a thousand dollars and base cost is 300 euros. Right, so I can, can you see it's two different currencies. So you will apply this section, even if the proceeds and the base cost are in dollars, if it's also a company, because companies, this section over here, does not apply to companies. Okay, what do we do then? Then they tell you, the proceeds must be translated at to the local currency at the average exchange rate or on spot rate and then the expenditure incurred so this is the base cost must be at the average exchange rate or it must be at spot rate so basically what you'll do now is when these items are on different currencies you'll convert this you'll multiply this by a random amount 
Okay, let's actually just mess around a little bit here. Let's say that's 10 and this is 8. So this will be 10,000 rands. And this will be 2,400 rands. And then you cal calculate the capital gain in rands. That's basically what they want you to do for paragraph 43.